Good afternoon, Cedarfield family. This is Michael Shaw. Happy May 21st. Very well. For those of you that are here at the community, thank you for tuning in. For those of you that are listening uh, tonight, uh, thank you for taking time away from your family to listen to uh, about 45 minutes worth of information um, at Cedarfield, in addition to a little personal little monologue here in the beginning. So some of you may have think Michael has lost it by playing Star Wars here on a live stream chat. Truth is, I want to tie in a theme to one of my most favorite movies of all time and a little story. So two Mondays ago, I was reminded of what perhaps was the most practical piece of life guidance I have ever received. As many of you probably know, two Mondays ago was International Star Wars Day, the actual day of this annual celebration. May 4th was chosen as a uh, tongue-in-cheek pun, uh, may the 4th be with you, instead of may the force be with you. International Star Wars Day um, is a chance for fans to uh, to dress up, to geek out, to cut classes, and to defend the evil empire. A long memory of mine uh, was with two wise men, some sage guys in my life. Um, they actually used a Star Wars uh, phrase in the movie to teach me a valuable lesson in life that embodied the, the present moment in order to, to capture the future of where you're headed. So just a little history, the original Star Wars uh, film was released on May 25th, 1977, just a couple days away, and I um, was just six years old. That summer, Star Wars mania just swept through the country. And I remember found myself swept up in um, some confusion and shadows going to sleep at night. Perhaps it was the film's galactic battle of good and evil, darkness and light that had settled um, uh, inside of this very innocent mind. And I was filled with just questions of right and wrong and purpose and all of that. Anyway, a couple of years later, I went to first grade. And I was troubled enough, still this whole Star Wars uh, theme was still in our lives. And perhaps you remember that uh, period of time. And I was troubled enough that I wanted to talk to um, Father Edward Mutual um, and my dad. So. There was this one particular um, opportunity, and if you've never met Father Edward Mutual, um, he has a voice like Darth Vader. It's a very deep voice every time he uh, delivered a homily. I grew up Catholic, and, uh, but he was very patient, and he listened as he tried to articulate the very early onset, um, helping me with a crisis, and then Offered, he offered the following guidance. He said, you need to know where you want to go and who you need in order to get there. And at eight years old, I had no idea what he was talking about. Realizing this, and rather than searching for um, for those of you that are Catholic, the Catechism for an illustrative passage, Father uh, Mutual offered an example along with my dad from the summer's go-to gossip, the Star Wars, and he asked me the following. He said, where did Luke Skywalker want to go? And I thought, that, thought about that for a second or two. And at the end of the movie, he wanted to go to the Death Star and he wanted to destroy it. I said, and who did he need in order to get there? And Father Usual asked, well, Luke needed, he 
He needed first to be brave, and he needed to trust the spirit of the Holy One Kenobi, and he needed to be guided by a force so that he could make the most perfect shot and blow up the Death Star. And I replied exactly, or Mr. Father Musil replied exactly. You need to know where you want to go and who you want to be there with along with you. And I didn't know that at the time, but it was probably one of the top five most practical pieces of life guidance that I have ever received. I didn't know that at the time, but this was my first lesson in understanding how incredibly critical it is that the role of trust and developing a path forward and a mission, how all three of those elements um, have to be in place. They have a common thread in order to uh, go through life. Trust, a plan, and a mission. And so I share that with you because um, I have received just an unbelievable amount of energy over this last 24 hours as we have unveiled our phase one plan about uh, Cedarfield Forward. So hopefully that little Star Wars uh, practical piece of advice that I was, when I was eight years old, and I gave a glimpse into my intellect, into my heart, as to why I believe we need a plan, we need shared values, we need a mission statement in order for all of us to wrap ourselves around where we're headed. I just want to share with you a couple of things that I have learned uh, that maybe we glossed over that I think it's, it's important to communicate. First, and you can zoom on this, please. First has to do with the state guidelines. So the, the governor of Virginia came out with some set of guidelines that um, his cabinet had put together to guide everybody here in the Commonwealth, businesses, citizens alike, to utilize these guidelines in developing your own personal plan or your corporate plan. And as you can see, I just pulled off five of these um, guidelines from, um, the web, from their website. The first is that you are safer at home. So he lifted last Friday the executive order to stay at home, but we still have in place a safer at home order, especially if you are the vulnerable. And so people that are 65 years of age and better, uh, this applies to you, the vulnerable, uh, or those that have compromised immune systems. And so this is a really important point which I want to come back to, that this, this is in phase one, phase two, and even in phase three of the state and federal guidelines. He talked about no social gatherings of more than 10 people. He talked about uh, continued social distancing, face coverings in public, and easing limits, gradually easing limits on businesses and uh, faith communities. Stay there for a second. And then it talks, I just want to talk a little bit about the federal guidelines. And I think it's important that we just spend a couple of minutes reviewing these because these were the backdrop, these were the seedlings of us developing our own plan. And so the federal guidelines talk about, again, social distancing protocols. It talks strongly considering special accommodations for personnel to persons who are members of the vulnerable population. It talks about the third pull point on the federal plan. It talks about visitors 
to senior living facilities and hospitals should be prohibited. Talks about large venues, um, gyms opening uh, with strict physical distancing and sanitation protocols. Talks about bars being closed. Talks about all vulnerable individuals should continue to shelter in place. It talks about individuals within public should be um, utilizing physical distancing protocols. It talks about avoiding socializing in groups of more than 10. And then lastly, one other that I pick off is closing common areas where personnel are likely to congregate and interact and enforce strict social distancing protocols. Come back to me again. So I wanted to share that with you because I have received a fair amount of negative energy um, around the community. In fact, if I am being truly honest and transparent with you, there are many of you last night that received an email, or many of you um, are, are aware of some letters that were dropped off to the administration department. So I want you to just want to leave everyone with with this before I launch into what I'm about to say. I am very comfortable with who I am. I have very broad shoulders, and I have learned over my life, given mentors um, that I have been close to, to be able to box in negativity, put that negativity in a box, and put it on a shelf, analyze it, understand it, and then more importantly, learn from it. So I want you to know that about me, because what I'm about to share with you has not affected me, and I'm trying to learn from it. But there were some, there, there were several not kind emails last night. Two of which I would just like to highlight. One of them compared me to Hitler. That's right. And there's a bunch of residents who were attached to that email. The other suggested that we have Nazi like restrictions now in phase one. That rhetoric is very decisive. Divisive is has created a lot of contention on this community today and highly demoralizing. I want to strongly encourage anyone that is either listening tonight or listening today or read those emails to condemn the immoral and craven emails were letters that were placed in the administration suite comparing me to Hitler or comparing our restrictions to Nazi-like. This approach is not only ineffective, it's dishonest and it's dangerous, but it's also very cowardly that people are sitting behind a computer in the middle of the night launching out emails with such rhetoric. It also is 100%, in my opinion, dismisses the tragedy of the Holocaust in the name of scoring points at Cedarfield to voice her opinion. Indeed, comparing Hitler says a lot more about the accuser than the accused. So I want to share that with everybody to get that off my chest. Because I don't think Cedarville needs this negative energy. That's why I actually play the Star Wars theme song. I think it's very evil that people are sharing that information at Cedarfield. We have shared our mission statement to keep everyone safe. We have shared our values. There's 10 values, and one of them is collaboration the value of collaboration, about our evolving preparedness plan, and our three-phase uh, Cedar Field Forward plan. When I, when I mean collaborative, I mean it's been a work of art with team members, so the executive team, team members throughout the campus, 
It has involved residents. It has involved our chemical living office, our Department of Health uh, officials, epidemiologists, and it even has involved um, uh, utilizing those state guidelines and those federal guidelines that I had just mentioned. You can feel free to go on the state gov website or the federal gov um, website to pull down their recommendations. So if you truly want to convince somebody else about our evolving preparedness plans and your opinions while maintaining, in my opinion, intellectual honesty and professed acumen um, or your own insights, I would suggest people who want to go down the path I just talked about to really come forth and put your ideas on the table and let the collective thought rule the day and present your idea that way rather than cowardly sending emails in the middle of the night. So that is my uh, opening remarks. And um, I just love the backdrop of Star Wars, the lessons that I learned. I hope you've seen the theme here over the last several weeks of me trying to open up my heart and intellect to you and leaving this campus to give you a little glimpse into who I am and where I have drawn my experiences to have formed my character, my leadership qualities, um, etc. So, if anybody has any opinion about that, you can certainly feel free to call the administration departments and we can certainly have an intellectual discussion about phase one of our plan and all of the details of phase one. Because I am very proud of the fact that we have actually rolled out what I consider a very balanced plan, very collaborative plan. There are some communities that say a resident leaves the community, you are quarantined automatically for 14 days. There are some communities that I mentioned uh, in uh, yesterday week that um, don't even have any uh, suggestions for residents. So I think this one goes right down the middle and speaking to trust that we uh, talked about in the beginning of the week, it really, I think in my opinion, uh, we're all in this together and this plan really allows flexibility to open it up knowing that we're all going to trust each other and that we are easing our way into these three-phase plans. We are gradually moving into a direction of a new norm once we get to phase three, which should probably take us into the better part of 12 months. So again, if anybody has any questions about our phase plan, and uh, I would offer to bring people as close to me as possible. Those of you that um, decided to choose the other path that I described here a couple of minutes ago, I would certainly enjoy having a phone conversation with you and or um, seeing you physically distant, which would probably even be better, physically distance six feet apart having a conversation with you. My door is always open to anyone that wants to talk intelligently about the state of affairs of Cedarfield in a very adult manner. So, okay, a couple of things with our preparedness plan. I did learn um, yesterday, just before we were about to take this live chat yesterday, that, um, Matt Dameron did get a hold of the barber, and so we did not have that in the print version that we sent out. Uh, but if you, like I said yesterday, if you wish to use barber services and you have been utilizing that amenity all along, continue to access and schedule your appointment the way you've always done before. Uh, one other thing, uh, or a couple other things, the, uh, the wellness clinic and the dentist. The dentist is seeing people, um, so you can feel free to uh, call the clinic and we are making appointments for uh, dental services. Podiatry 
has agreed to be part of a phase one, but we're just not quite sure yet of the first day that um, the podiatrist will be here on site. And I have learned, um, I wasn't here this morning tending to some other business. I have heard that we have some bumps in the road with um, a library. And so I'm not quite sure. Tomorrow I hope to have a little more color commentary about what is the plan for the library here in Phase 1. I think we're, we're trying to cross a little speed up here in the last uh, 24 hours or so. And then the last thing I would just say about our preparedness plan is Ann Hopper in the clinic and Lori Shepard in Helping Hands have tried their best to field a number of calls. It seems like because we are allowing people to um, visit uh, folks outside of the community, um, a flood, it seems like everyone has this perception, or a large majority of people have this perception, that a Cedar Field is just open for business and it went back to business as usual. And that could be furthest from the truth. Uh, while we did say yesterday, you can. You certainly, uh, we are encouraging you to visit your family, your daughter, your son, or uh, whoever here in the, in the Richmond area. Um, but as we just talked about in these state guidelines, these federal guidelines, and it's actually in our phase plan at the very top of page one, that you are safer at home, I would use sparingly the privilege to visit people outside of the community, um, gradually ease into this visitation right to other doors. Uh, we are not opening up the community for visitation for obvious reasons, because it's, that is not a gradual ease of moving in this direction. Um, so probably the most frequently asked question of Ann Hopper, uh, or to Ann Hopper and Many of the front desk was, well, when can my when can people come into my apartment or my cottage? Uh, and we aren't at that stage of um, inviting people to the community, either in a cottage, an apartment, assisted living, the health center, or memory support. We're just not right there. So, choosing healthy communication is. Uh, so if you wish to have a dialogue about the uh, phase plan or any suggestions as we move into phase two and phase three, again, as I've been saying here for three years, the administration suite door is always open to you. Please feel free to come by and offer your opinion about uh, our current plan and or suggestions that we should consider moving into phase two and phase three. Uh, and we will, we're gonna start talking about um, the rest of the plan here in the next couple of weeks, and we'll take everyone's diverse opinion and thoughts uh, and experiences and try to put it into um, uh, and refine our current approach. All right. Next up, is Matt out there? Yep. All right, Matt Dameron is here. He's gonna talk a little bit about the health center, assisted living, and memory support. Can I share your good news? Sure. <laughs> so, a little good news. I know uh, Florence or Trish, or some of the pastoral services team is gonna share another good news segment uh, later here in the uh, hour. But the good news about Matt Dameron, Matt Dameron is engaged. He got engaged over these last two weeks to a woman who we have not met, but yet we're going to put that in our face plan. So we're going to get to be <laughs> Kelly. Her name is Kelly. And, uh, I'm sure that she uh, is just really thrilled about the uh, engagement. She did say yes, right? She did say yes, so that's good news. And um, every good man needs a great woman to make 
we have the better hands. So glad that has found um, this soulmate. So, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Cameron. Thank you, Michael. And yes, Michael said that part of the phasing plan was to have her come and have everyone approve of her. So yes, so we'll, uh, we'll do that. I told her that last night, actually. <laughs> Made her a little nervous, so she thought it was a great. Um, so uh, thank you, Matt. And uh, just wanted to give you all an update from the licensed portion of, of the building. And um, I feel like I've kind of decided I'm, I'm going to start these uh, these little sessions with um, just a huge thank you. So you'll probably get annoyed with me saying that over and over again, but I, I, I really feel like it's deserved. Um, just a huge thank you to our team over at the licensed portion of the building, um, from our nurses and CNAs to housekeeping to rec therapy to maintenance to our leaders. Um, just the, the commitment to our residents, their well-being, um, uh, our infection control protocols, it's, it's, it's been great and um, to be able to witness that firsthand. So I just want to thank them so very much for, for what they're doing for our residents and taking care of them and, um, and trying to keep this uh, virus out of here as much as possible. Um, and especially with the, uh, the team in our, our small section that's working with a, um, a few residents that are uh, people under um, kind of investigation or a couple of our positive cases. Uh, I think next time I'm, I'm gonna bring a picture of, of the PPE that they have to wear um, for eight hours a day, <laughs> um, taking care of our residents, everything from a, N95 masks with a surgical mask on top, to the face shields, the gloves, the gowns. It's a lot. Um, and to work eight hours plus in that is, is just incredible. Um, so just want to thank them yet again for, for everything that they're doing. Um, I took a very um, good news approach to uh, the, the licensed portion of the building, so just want to share some great things that we have going on there. Uh, first and foremost is Memorial Day. Uh, we have, of course, this great plan um, for our independent living side of the building uh, out here in the courtyard, and, uh, you know, we, we really want to take infection control seriously and not have areas kind of mingle together and maintain appropriate physical distancing and, and um, infection control practices, but we still want to celebrate a holiday. So uh, the teams have been working really hard uh, for what we can do over at the licensed portion of the building to uh, celebrate this great day coming up on Monday. So our healthcare uh, areas, they, uh, we're taking quite a few precautions, but um, gonna have uh, kind of a Memorial Day themed lunch and decorations throughout the day. We're gonna flag Cheryl, Kyle, our music therapist, will be doing patriotic songs and sing-alongs with our residents. Uh, and then we also have kind of a room-to-room -room, um, treat cart, <laughs> for lack of a better term, uh, that's gonna go around in the afternoon uh, with some Memorial Day treats for people. Uh, in assisted living, we're having a Memorial Day barbecue block party that is going to be in our back parking lot outside of assisted living uh, with decorations, music, there's actually going to be a food truck there uh, with snow cones and lemonade and all kinds of good stuff. Uh, and of course, keeping everyone as distant as possible. It's gonna be very similar to the, uh, the IL celebration with kind of different seating times um, uh, so that we can still celebrate but, but keep everyone safe. And then down in the Sunshine Plaza, having a Memorial Day cookout out in the, um, in the garden area, uh, breaking out the grill for the first time this season and uh, serving up some sliders and hot dogs and that way we can get outside, uh, hopefully enjoy the weather, get some good food. Um, and Aaron, um, our new 
right? Therapists will be doing uh, patriotic songs and also some sing-alongs. So, very excited about uh, our Memorial Day plans over on the license side of the building um, so that we can uh, have a little sense of normalcy uh, with our uh, Memorial Day celebrations. Um, I just mentioned Erin, and I mentioned her last week as well. Erin Chauncey is our new rec therapist down in Sunshine Plaza. She started uh, this Wednesday, so just yesterday, um, and we are so happy to have her. She's going to be concentrating really these first few weeks doing one-on-ones with our, our residents down there, really getting to know uh, the residents and then uh, getting to know the families as well, kind of from a distance, at least for right now. And uh, so once we have her, um, we're still working on her login credentials and phone numbers and things like that. Once we have all of that uh, in stone, we will be giving that out to our, our um, Sunshine Plaza residents and families um, so that you can get to know Erin. Uh, she will also be doing the FaceTime calls with our residents down there. So uh, that's going to be another great opportunity for her to get to know the residents and their families. Uh, let's see. Moving upstairs a little bit. Um, so we in our South household, we have um, some residents that are uh, doing really well, getting better from being sick and coming off isolation. We are so incredibly thankful and happy for that. Uh, and um, so hopefully we'll keep on moving in that direction. And uh, also in South, we have a new full-time uh, LPN that will be starting with us. And to go along with the hiring, um, uh, the, new, the new nurse, uh, we are still hiring for a few open positions and we have quite a few people that are applying for those positions. So um, there's still a lot of interest out there and uh, we're still interviewing and getting a few of our positions filled with some great candidates. So um, we're happy with that. And another thing that we're still working on is moving residents through the different levels of service. So we really slowed down there for a while on purpose um, to really keep the areas as separate as possible, but there's kind of a, um, a misconception out there that I've heard of a little bit here recently, which is we've stopped moving people through, um, through our continuum, and um, that's not accurate. We still are doing that. Um, have residents that really have that need and we are moving people through the continuum. So um, just wanted to, to clarify that for people. Um, and then the most exciting news is birthday news. We have uh, one of our residents in Central, their birthday is next week, and we have lined up a FaceTime birthday party with the uh, uh, resident and their families. They are very happy with that and the same happy birthday, that cake, all of that stuff. So it's a testament to um, even in these difficult times, we can we can still do some pretty cool things um, and, and celebrate those major milestones with our residents. And last but not least with birthdays, we have a big birthday coming up um, in our assisted living area. Um, one of our residents next Friday will be turning so I think she's, uh, her and one of our Nile residents are <laughs> giving each other a run for their money. So we have a, um, a resident turning 104 next week, and that's going to be uh, a great time for the people down there in the city living. So, all right, that's all my fun news. So. Any tidbits about your, your uh, fiance? Uh, <laughs> any tidbits <laughs> about my fiance? Let's see. Does she like to do? What does she like to do? So um, uh, we have known each other for about five and a half years. We've been dating for three years. And um, she loves being outside. She has a cat named Myla, who is a very, very mean cat. Um, <laughs> my cat is so 
so much nicer. Uh, <laughs> uh, but but loves getting outside. She's a big horseback rider, um, and she's a rat therapist. So um, she is very involved in the senior living field as well. Uh, so that's kind of how we kind of connect it. So. All right, thank you, All right. Thank thank you, you sir. Much. Appreciate you. Okay, okay just a couple of uh, little tidbits here. First, I have a little picture, picture up here of Westminster, Canterbury, Richmond. Those of you that have uh, friends over at uh, Westminster, Canterbury, I just have a lot of admiration for John Burns, the Chief Executive Officer of the campus. Um, just to let you, uh, as Chris Henderson mentioned last week, there is just a very healthy camaraderie here in the city of Richmond. Uh, we are able to just pick up the phone uh, and talk to one another about life in our communities. And uh, John has just been so flexible, uh, so open, and uh, just he's a very smart person. <laughs> And uh, so those of you that uh, have friends over there, I just wanted you to know that the, the relationship between Searfield and Westminster Canterbury is alive and well, along with Lakewood, Beth Shalom, Covenant Woods, uh, to name a couple of others. And we are all working in concert. When I talk about developing uh, plans, our Searfield Forward Plan, uh, John and um, his very talented team also have a, a plan. Um, they have a mission statement around uh, re-engage and reopening. Uh, they have shared values um, as well in uh, wrapping themselves around a, a common cause. Um, but just wanted you all to know that that's uh, the relationship between the organizational alliance could not be stronger. Yours truly has had the, the privilege of working in five different markets across the United States. And I truly have to say that the Richmond markets and the retirement communities within this market, the level of camaraderie across the organizational line um, has been and will continue to be just exceptional. We're all drawing on the collective wisdom of one another Rising tides benefit everybody, and it's just a it's a very healthy situation here in uh, in the city. Uh, just a little COVID nineteen communication updates. Uh, we are is Matt still back there? No, no, he took off. Matt and his team are laser focused on infection control. Um, Connie, oh, I spelled that wrong, induction uh, control. Um, Connie McGowan, who is the infection control director in the entire nursing team, entire neighborhood teams, are doing an unbelievable job of infection control. And so if the state were to walk in here and look at our plans, I mean, very confident that they would be very proud of what we're doing, not only of the, the plan that we have currently, but going back to the beginning efforts in the beginning of March and seeing the chronological evolving plan as, um, as this situation has uh, placed us in. So uh, infection control is alive and well, and it is part of our shared values, one of our 10 shared values, you can help not only residents that are listening, team members that are listening to this tonight, and certainly family members. I'm hoping that um, those of you that are listening that live here, that may be entertaining the residents that live here, your loved one, maybe in your home over the next couple of weeks. I am hoping that you take our shared values and please, Please apply these values in your own home. I wouldn't ask you to do anything that I'm not doing. These shared values are alive and well in my household. Tomorrow I'll share a couple of pictures of my children wearing their masks, how we have a blue tape. 
my, my wife happens to be a therapist anyway, so we got all kinds of therapeutical things inside the house, but physically distant um, visuals are being present in my house. Uh, there is a behavioral chart in our house to make sure that we're all taking personal responsibility um, for uh, the first two items. And um, we utilize the Pathways to Wellness philosophy that was born here in the Shaw Council. We have nine domains of well-being in our own house that we're constantly tracking, making sure that, um, that every day we're touching on each of those elements. In fact, my sons, part of their um, exercise, their physical uh, well-being, they just earned their brown belts. They do, they've been doing Taekwondo for the last seven years, and uh, they just earned their brown belt. I cannot be more proud of them. They just graduated from blue belt. Blue belt means that you have the discipline of patience under control. Tyler said, in when I was interviewing him, I did a Facebook uh, post. I said, Tyler, what does patience mean to you? And he said, Daddy, patience is all about being able to connect with people in a different way through Zoom and video conferencing. We can't stand in front of people anymore. Roger said the following, Daddy, patience. Once upon a time, I was scared of the dark. But patience has taught me, one, that when I go to bed tonight, I think about God's presence around me. Second, I think about my day and how it went. And then third, patience has taught me the ability to understand what I need to work on tomorrow to be a better boy. Straight from the mouth of babes are earning a brown belt. A 10 year old and an 11 year old can understand patience. Hopefully that little story will give you some inspiration at working at your level of patience. Believe me, when I'm leaving here and headed home, I pray for patience because that's my real job. And I often tell people coming to Cedarfield is a cakewalk compared to going home and trying to parent two at-risk children. So I have learned a lot of patience as well as they have graduated from their uh, blue belt to their brown belt. Got a little topic there, my apologies. Okay, COVID-19 communication, these statistics have not changed since yesterday. We have 59 residents that have tested, uh, we have tested or they have tested by themselves, and nine residents have tested positive over the last 12 weeks. 91 team members have tested voluntarily or through our point prevalence survey, and eight team members have tested positive. This next segment is for families um, that are listening tonight. On Friday, which is tomorrow, our supply shuttle program will pick back up uh, for folks that live in the health center, assisted living, and or memory support. So if we just drop off the bag for them between one and three, along between at the corner of Gaskins and Maitland, uh, please do so behind the hotels in that parking ride. And then lastly, uh, for families afar um, or near, yesterday we were talking about our maintenance team. They developed a hand washing station that is prevalent all around the community. They're also working on something called a visitation vista. This is one of the, the prototypes I heard through the grapevine, Eddie, 
and that they have one already installed by the system link. And we're testing it out and hope to maybe make it available maybe sometime next week. I have also heard that they are developing a visitation vista for outside near the health center so that maybe there could be some visitation of loved ones uh, uh, from folks outside the community to visit their loved one who lives in the health center. So stay tuned for that. The maintenance team is working hard as visitation vista. And that is it for us. Do you have any questions coming in, Eddie? Nope. I see no questions coming in here. Oh, one comment. Michael, you're not looking at the camera. There is a reason why I'm probably going from, uh, there's actually three cameras here uh, today. We're testing out um, uh, some of our technology, so we have one camera here, and one here, and one here, so I uh, apologize if I'm not looking straight at one camera, but we, uh, we're going to probably be utilizing a couple of different modes of uh, technology to make sure that we capture the video in order to be able to confidently be able to post something every night. Uh, it's one of the most frequently asked questions that we fumble here in our technology and something's not posted, we get a lot of emails about what happened yesterday or in the live stream. So we got plan A, we got plan B, and we got plan C right now uh, working in concert. Okay, Trish Carter is here, spiritual well-being. Good afternoon, Sierra Peel. I think I'm looking at camera A. <laughs> I would like to read to you a portion of one of my favorite books from childhood. Perhaps you've heard of it. It's called The Velveteen Rabbit. This is what it says. You become. It takes a long that's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily or have sharp edges or who have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes drop out, and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. But that doesn't matter at all, because once you are real, you can't be ugly, except to people who don't understand. And now for some good news. Okay, there are several layers of good news going on in this picture. The first piece of good news is that this adorable child's grandfather is Hamlet Davenport. And we are so fortunate to have Hammond on our team here at Cedarfield. If you have ever encountered Hamlet, you know what a wonderful person he is. This young man is Andrew Lai. He is six months old, and he is the son of Hamlet's youngest daughter, Sarah. And that's her husband, Adam. They live right here in Glen Allen. When proud grandfather Hamlet was asked how Andrew likes to spend his time, he thought about it and said, smiling, 
doing, gurgling, and generally being happy. I'd say that's pretty good news. Have a wonderful afternoon.